Okay. All right, I'm now recording. Excellent. Well, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Git slash GitHub webinar. I'll be your host today, Matt Thomas. Um, today's webinar is going to be very, very loose, very unstructured. Uh, part of it's because I'm not sure about everyone's background with Git, and um, part of it's also um, I want to be sure to try to cover what I can, so you can have a good a, a good foundation to start with. It, it Git is obviously a very powerful, flexible tool. There's a lot to talk about. There's more. to uh, cover back in. Also going to ask if everybody can mute, uh, mute their, their uh, microphones for right now. And um, yeah, I think we're probably going to try to do mostly text communication until we get into some more in-depth questions later, if we can get to that. Okay. Just trying to get yeah, Matt, you're still sounding a little bit garbled, so you might want to drop it, drop it back a little bit. Yeah, unfortunately, WebEx is automatically adjusting everything for me. Oh, okay. It won't let me control the audio level. Okay. Um, I'll do. I'll do my best to um, sit back. Is it? Is it too loud? Is that the problem? No, it's just distorted. Hmm. Is this any better? Mm, no, that sounded a little. No. Um, and if somebody else can say, maybe I'm the only. Maybe it's just on my computer. So. Yeah, I'll see. Um, see, now it's behaving, isn't it? Oh yes, yes, that's good. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, before it would it would readjust everything, so we'll give that a shot. Okay, so I guess first of all, what I'm thinking is, you know, I want to try to keep this somewhat interactive and tailored to everyone's background and experience. So, is there anyone who's attending right now who who doesn't have any experience with Git or GitHub? Or has everybody used it at least once? It looks like we have a couple of people who can't yeah. can't connect. Well, I guess the good thing is we have a recording. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure about everyone's experience. So. What I thought I'd do real quick, because we are limited on time, is at least show you um, GitHub's help screen. You know, one thing I wanted to make sure to cover, and I included this in the um, the notes I sent out to everyone, is the fact that one reason why, why Git is so great is because it has phenomenal support. GitHub has really embraced uh, Git technology. I, I should mention that Git is a distributed version control system. And GitHub is a service that provides Git hosting. Um, so with that said, GitHub, the company that's providing the Git hosting service, they've done a lot for developing documentation and providing a lot of support for the Git technology. So I wanted to make sure that everyone's aware of the resources. I put those links in the email that's sent out to the Google Summer Code email list. And um, I thought I'd start out by just making sure that everyone's aware that Git and GitHub are actually two different things. Some people get confused by that. Some people think that GitHub um, and Git are, are one and the same, but they're actually two different things. Um, Git was actually developed by Linus Torvalds and, and his team to actually manage the Linux kernel. In the, uh, the meeting notes I sent out, there's a link to a YouTube video um, where Linus actually presented a talk on Git in 2007. It's really interesting. It's really informative. It's also um, kind of entertaining if you enjoy Linus's uh, personality and his sense of humor. Um, he's not afraid to, to share his opinion and, and strong strong opinions, as he's called it. Um, 
but definitely that's, that's definitely worth watching if you have an hour or so free. Um, but I really, I wanted to make sure that everyone has these resources because there is so much we can talk about Git. Git is so powerful, and flexible. It can can be used different ways for different scenarios, and um, we're going to cover a couple different scenarios today. But definitely, a major part of using Git is having some sort of strategy when you're um, looking at your project and how you're going to version your software. Um, in many cases, if you're working by yourself and you won't be sharing any code with anyone else, you don't even need to push your repository to anybody else. You can initialize a local Git repository, make your commits, track your history locally, and that's it. You'll never need GitHub. But since we're an open source and we want to promote sharing and collaboration, we are using GitHub as the platform for sharing and collaborating that information. So we're going to talk about uh, two of those different scenarios. What I'll do real quick is I'm going to pull up those notes if I can type. And I, prepare, I apologize for not having those um, already up. So we have a link to the YouTube video up here and the different resources that I mentioned. And so one thing I wanted to talk about real quick are some of the basics. Everyone needs some of these basics to get started with, with Git and GitHub. And we can do this with um, the help of GitHub's help section. So here we are on help.github.com. And it really has almost everything you need to know getting for getting started. Um, really, if you click these buttons, it'll show you what you need to install for your operating system. Um, steps you need to go through to um, install Git, set up your SSH, SSH keys, because Git, everything's authenticated. Um, generating SSH keys, how to actually create your first um, Git repository, configure Git. So all this information is already up there at help.github.com. Um, it's really simple, really easy to use, get up and running, a lot of great documentation. Um, now, has anyone um, not done that yet? Or it looks like everyone has some experience in Git or GitHub. I know that some of the students have already forked um, projects or repositories. So uh, I'm hoping that um, nobody needs help right now to get the basics started. So what I'm going to jump into is something really important. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so we'll, we'll skip the notes then. Um, it's working. It's working repository. It's also how to uh, do pull requests, and really, it's it's all about how to be collaborative using Git and GitHub. So some of these notes we'll use. Um, from this third button over, fork a repo. And you know, in the open source world, fork is sometimes looked upon as a bad thing. GitHub actually makes it a good thing. And I'll show you what we mean. I'm logged in to GitHub as myself, and I'm currently looking at the Joomla CMS repository. I'm going to now fork it. And you do so by clicking the fork button. I'm going to fork it to myself. Now, when you fork a repository on GitHub, you're basically making a copy of the repository and you're making it your own. And now I just have my own brand new CMS that's all my own. Well, sort of, it's a direct copy of the Joomla CMS. But I just forked it. And you can see up here at the top of the screen, you see between brain slash Joomla CMS. Now, this is my fork of the Joomla repository. So it's a direct copy right now. Now, what's really important is if I wanted to collaborate, and obviously we want to encourage that, obviously I want to give back to the project, I need to set things up to where I can do that. Now, the first step is actually cloning a repository. Now, I'm actually going to do everything through a terminal. I'm using Linux. So everything here will be command prompt. And I have all these commands in the in the, the webinar notes, and they're also in the, the help.github.com. So first thing I'm going to do, actually I need to go into the right directory. My apologies. 
So I'm actually, I've actually created a fork of the Joomla CMS. And because I might, I might clone the Joomla repository, I might fork it, I might do other things, I'm actually going to set up my local environment to where I have multiple um, repositories set up. So the way I like to do it is I like to create a, a directory for the project itself. Within that directory, I'll actually create a subdirectory for my fork. So here we have my folder structure in my public HTML directory. I have a, a dev folder, I have a Joomla folder, and, and within that I have a, a fork folder. Now this is my Joomla fork, and this is where I'm going to clone my fork of the Joomla repository. The syntax is very simple. It's git clone in the URL and then git repository. Now a great thing about GitHub, and while that while that clones real quick, you'll see here at the top of the screen, it will show you the URL used for cloning. I'm just looking at Skype real quick. <laughs> so this is the URL for cloning, git at github.com in my username. So we are counting objects. Now one thing we're mentioning is that because Git is a distributed version control system, when you check out or you clone a repository, you're actually making a copy of everything. So technically speaking, when I'm done with this clone, there'll be two copies of my fork. One will be on GitHub, one will be on my local computer. The great thing about this distributed uh, version control systems is that because everyone has a full copy, it's much, much faster. And that's one thing that Linus will talk about a lot in the video, is the fact that speed was a major consideration. The Linux kernel is it's a little bit bigger than the Joomla CMS. Um, it's a lot bigger, actually. So when you're doing uh, clones and pushes and pulls, you need something that's very performant. One reason why we have a distributed system. The other thing that's really great about it is that you don't need backups. If you clone in more than one place, you basically have a backup. So here we have a clone of my fork. Um, yes, I actually will be more than happy to answer any questions uh, after we're done with the webinar, or if someone wants to um, type in questions in the Skype, or um, actually Skype the best place. I have a couple monitors up. So uh, feel free to type in any questions there. Um, but yeah, just real quick, a quick review because uh, I think a couple, of a couple of people joined us late. All I did so far is I forked the Joomla CMS on GitHub and I just cloned it to my computer. Now, what I wanted to show you is that once you forked a repository, something that's very important, especially if you're going to be Okay, Stefan hasn't used Git, so um, I'll definitely try to cover a lot of basics. And Stefan, I'll be sure to, um, if you want, we can actually do something one-on-one -on -one later, too. I can show you some resources. I also sent an email to the uh, Google Summer Code email list with a lot of notes and resources. So we can help you get started that way, too. So um, what I can do is a real super quick review um, just for Stefan so we can see what I did. Uh, I forked the Joomla CMS on GitHub, and basically forking is making a copy of a repository. So here on GitHub, I'm actually viewing the Joomla CMS. I clicked the fork button in the upper right-hand corner, and GitHub did everything else. It then created a copy. It basically created my own CMS, my own copy of the Joomla CMS. You can see here, between brain slash Joomla-CMS. After I forked it, uh, I'm using Linux, so I'm using a, I'm using command prompt. Everything's terminal right now. I cloned my fork of the CMS with this command: git clone. Oh, I'm sorry, I I, <laughs> I misread that. Okay, so I so just a quick review, then I cloned my fork of the Joomla CMS. So what I wanted to show you real quick is. One thing that's really important uh, before before you actually start collaborating, what I want to you want to make sure that your fork state is up to date. So one thing that's really great on the uh, Git help section is configuring an upstream remote. You'll see here there's a command here: Git remote add. 
remote, when you use the git remote command, you basically are adding another repository somewhere in the world that you're pulling and pushing from. So I'm going to add the Joomla CMS repository as my upstream. Now, technically speaking, the name upstream is just a name. So I could, I could call it Bob or Sally, whatever I wanted to, but upstream is the, the general um, convention that people use. So the command is git remote add upstream. And I want to add the Joomla CMS as my upstream repository. So I'm actually looking at the Joomla, Joomla CMS repository in GitHub. I am grabbing their git readme URL and I'm adding them as the upstream remote. Why are we? Mm -hmm. Ah. My apologies. My I was in the wrong directory. So um, I'm now in my Joomla CMS fork of, of Joomla, and I just added the Joomla CMS as an upstream repository to my fork of the Joomla CMS. Now this is really important so that your your local copy and your fork stay up to date to the, the project you fork. One other command you'll see here um, is git fetch upstream. And what that will do is that will allow you to pull in any recent changes from the upstream repository into your fork of it. So it's thinking. There we go. So you can see here my fork, I just pulled in a few new branches. So these are these are branches that were created in the Joomla CMS that I just pulled into my, my fork of the Joomla CMS. Now obviously this is very important if you're planning on contributing back to the project that you forked. Now in the notes, one thing I mentioned is that you'll see in the fork section labeled forking and pull requests in the parentheses contributing back. I've outlined how to do this. Now, once you fork a repository and you've configured your upstream remote and you want to start working, you definitely want to work everything in branches. And I like to call them feature branches. So if you're working on fixing bugs or creating a new feature for the CMS, even for the Joomla platform, you want to create a new branch before you do anything else for that feature. That way you can keep each branch clean and you can, you can, your uh, pull requests can be more easily. So, to display your branches, we have git branch. That shows you your branches. If you want to create a new, new branch, it's git branch. Then the name of the branch. I'm going to call my, my new branch, new branch. So now you'll see I have two branches listed. I have master and new branch. The, the one with the asterisk next to it, if you're using Linux or command prompt, shows you which one that you're currently on. So I need to check out my new branch. So I can work on it. And you can see here I just switched to the new branch. Now in this case, I can jump into my files and I can actually start working on those files. I can make some changes. Um, let's say I'm, I you know, do something silly right now just so I can have a change. Um, we'll just put the word hello at the top of the readme. You can change one file, you can change multiple files. Um, if everyone's used Git before, you probably are very familiar with all these commands. In this case, I'll just do git add all. And um, I'll just commit this. This is an important point. Um, uh, I'm just going to make a quick note of my change. I always encourage people to be as as explicit as possible. Try to have a lot of details in your commit notes. It's very important. Now, the nice, nice thing about uh, GitHub is you can push to a new branch. 
And to show you what I mean here, before I do anything, I'm, I'm back at GitHub. You can see the branches right now in my fork. You can see features, master, playground, and version 2.52. I'm now going to push to a branch that doesn't exist yet on GitHub. And we're thinking. So there you go. We just calculated it's the delta and all the differences. You can see there that we push to a new branch. So if I refresh my browser, you'll see we have a new branch on GitHub. Now the reason why branching is important, and this is something I've learned the hard way, is that when you fork a project, you, you definitely want to keep a new, you want to keep the master branch clean. You want to keep it untouched and then branch out, out of that, create new branches for your master branch. And each of those new branches you want to be your feature, um, I mean the bug fix or whatever you're doing that you're going to, to push back. Now that you have your, your new branch, your chain is made, you can see here I'm on the new branch, you can actually just click pull request. And you can see here, GitHub is very smart because GitHub and Git itself tracks the history it knows that this is a fork of the Juma CMS. So just by clicking that pull request button, it knows that I'm asked, I, I, once I click this button, the send pull request button, GitHub will not notify the Juma CMS that I'm asking them to merge in the changes I made on this branch of my fork. Now, this is a very quick overview, a very quick summary. Uh, Really, this is a, a basic implementation of a strategy that I think a lot of people would use if you're fixing bugs, if you're creating new features, if you're, um, you know, adding new class to the platform or something like that. The most important thing to keep in mind here that I think a lot of people agree on is that when you fork an existing repository and you fork an existing project, you want to keep your master branch clean before you do anything else, create your new feature branch and you work from that feature branch. And of course, you can create as many branches as you want of that fork. Now, at this point, before we jump into anything, does anyone have any questions right now? Uh, best place to put those questions would be in the Skype chat. I have it open on another window. Is everyone familiar with everything that I've talked about so far? I will take the silence as, oh, you need to turn all over. Yes. Is that better? Yeah, I'm switching right now between uh, my browser and the terminal. Right. Okay, so the next, the next topic is, it's a little different. And this one's a little more involved, and it looks like, yeah, we should have enough time to do it. It's, it's a little more involved. And what this next topic is, is how to use Git Ignore to exclude projects that you don't want to, um, I'm sorry, to exclude files that you don't want to include in your repository. Git Ignore is a very, very powerful tool. Or ignoring stuff. So you'll see in the notes that I sent out on the list that this is this is one approach, one strategy, a recipe you could call it, for creating a repository that tracks only parts, uh, just a few files yeah, um, that you're working on. Sorry, I'm following um, Skype chat at the same time. So. I'm going to create a new directory for this new project. I'm going to so um, eloquently call test. And I will go ahead and close my old terminal because um, it's a brand new project, brand new example. So all I've done so far is I've created an empty directory and I've opened it in terminal. Now I have git installed already. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, initialize an empty repository. 
if we look at the folder structure, you can see my hidden files. All you see is a git, a dot git folder. That's all you see in there. So now I'm going to, because I, I want to collaborate with other people, I want to share my work with everybody else, I'm going to create a new repository that I can call test on GitHub. Now, GitHub recently made a change to their website. They allow you to initialize a repository with a readme, as well as a git ignore file. Now, here's a little um, tip for everyone. They do have a Joomla git ignore file. Unfortunately, it's not up to date. It's currently a, it currently is accurate for Joomla 1.6. Uh, Michael has actually created a pull request to GitHub to update it for Joomla 2.5.4. So uh, you'll see in in the webinar notes that I actually have a link to to Michael's um, Git Ignore. So you can actually um, you you can initialize your repository with the current GitHub Git Ignore, but you will need to update it. So I'm initializing my new repository on GitHub. I've also initialized it locally. So now I need to add my GitHub repository. And I'm going to add it as, I'm going to call it origin just to follow the convention. And just copy and pasting the URL that they supply. I have added my origin. And I'm going to pull everything that's currently on GitHub to my local repository. And I apologize for the speed delay. I'm not sure why that's happening. So here we go. We just pulled um, a few objects. So we have a git ignore and a readme. You can see we opened it up. It is a fairly comprehensive git ignore. As I mentioned, it is a little bit out of date. So we're going to go ahead and borrow Michael's. Actually, what I need to do, I apologize. I I need to pull those notes again. I'll go straight to the the link I, I um, have in the webinar notes is actually to the the raw file. So you'll see that this is the raw text file. There are a few differences here. So I'm just going to copy and paste that file into my local git ignore. That way everything's up to date. For Joomla 2.5.4. So all I did there is I just copied. Oh, okay, yeah. What I'm doing, Mark, is right now I'm 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 going to ignore the Joomla CMS files from my repository, so I can add additional files and track only the files that I add. So the files, uh, everything I'm listing in this Git ignore will ig ignore everything that's in the Joomla 2.5.4 installation. And uh, this will make much more sense in a few minutes. So, um, so just real quick, because GitHub's Joomla.ignore file is a little bit out of date, I copied and pasted the contents of, of Michael Badker's most recent GitIgnore, that's for Joomla 2.5.4, into the one that GitHub provides. So what I need to do now, is actually um, commit that back. Oops. So all I did is I updated the gitignore file, I committed it, and I'm pushing it back to GitHub just to make sure I have everything tracked and pushed back up. So there we go. We have um, 
we have our, our repository. And you can see here, if I refresh my browser, I just updated my data ignore. You can see in green what's new, in red what's been um, removed. So the reason why we're doing this is so that I can add files to a Joomla installation and only track those files that I'm adding. So right now I'm, I'm downloading Joomla 2.5.4. And now I can I can actually copy all those files into my, my new repository. And if I do a git at all, now I'm going to run a git status. This will tell me what's changed between what's in my repository that I'm not ignoring and what's what's actually in the file structure. So we see here that there are um, six files that are in the Joomla 2.5.4 zip that are actually not ignored, that are actually not ignored in the git ignore file. So, um, you know, just to save time and not to bore you, these are just six, six files. You could actually copy and paste this information, you know, line by line into your git ignore. Um, but for example, if I, because I already did a git add all, the next time I do a git commit, it will actually um, push those files as well. So we don't want that right now. We actually, we're gonna create a new plugin. We're actually not going to create it, but we're just going to pretend we're creating one. Um, we'll just call this um, turns. A new, I'm sorry, yeah, I need to be directory. Oh, <laughs> two typos in a row. So let's just pretend I'm creating a new, a new plugin called Terms. We'll add an index.html file. So I'm reading the comments in Skype right now. So the 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 tactic here is that I actually have the full Joomla CMS installation in this directory, and I can actually use Joomla in here. But because I have all those files listed in my git ignore file, when I go to add files and commit files and and push them to my remote repository, it will only track those things that I've added. So if I do git add all again, you'll see that we have a new, a new file that I just added. So you could do this in multiple directories within, within the root of, your C, of the uh, local installation of CMS, you can do this. Uh, you know, all within one subdirectory. The point is, is this tactic in using the git ignore file will allow you to have a, a number of files locally, but only track those files that you want to track. I know that's kind of a quick overview. I definitely want to leave time for, for questions and comments. Um, you know, we have a lot we could talk about. Now, in my notes, one thing I mentioned is that it, we can also do something really fun here. Um, because I have a Joomla 2.5.4 installation in this directory, one thing I can do now is I can actually add the Joomla CMS repository as a remote to this, this repository. So, so just to kind of review where we're at and, and where we're gonna go with this, all I've done is I've created a repository in GitHub that's empty. I've manually copied in Joomla 2.5.4, the actual release that's on Joomla.org. I've added some files to it and made some changes to it. Um, you know, I could have developed a whole new extension within this within this Joomla installation. But because I'm using a Git Ignore file, I'm using the one from Michael that has almost everything updated, um, it will actually ignore everything that's in Joomla. So um, 
I'm going to do a quick commit. So you can see this is in action. Just so you know I'm not lying to you, this is the directory. This is my, my test repository, and you see a lot of files in here. You see a full Joomla installation. If I go to GitHub, I am uh, going to go into my terms repository. You'll see the only thing that I have here, and you can see that everything's pushed now. The only thing I'm actually tracking are the files that are not listed in the Git ignore. So where this is very powerful is that if you wanted to create an extension, for example, and only track that extension and not the whole CMS, this would allow you to actually have that extension live locally within a Joomla installation, test things live, develop it live within a working Joomla install, and then only track the files that you want to track. Now, one thing I mentioned is that we also want to add the Joomla CMS repository to remote, so we can also keep my local copy of Joomla up to date with what's happening on GitHub. Now, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Because I'm using Linux, I can actually um, go through my history and pull up some commands. Um, the command I'm using again is git remote add upstream. And I actually have the URL of the Joomla repository. I just added the Joomla GitHub repository as a remote to my local test repository. And then I can actually fetch those changes. So what I'm doing right now by using git fetch upstream, I'm now pulling in anything that's happened, anything that's been committed to the Joomla CMS repository since 2.5.4 was released. Now this is something that's good to do because you know that way you can keep up to date up to the minute if you wanted to with any changes that have happened within the Joomla CMS. You can do the same thing with a platform or any other project out there. And technically it doesn't have to be on GitHub. It can be any remote. It could be another person who has their own you know Git server. It could be someone else in your in your office. Really it's just another Git repository is all it is. So as you can see we've had well, actually, we're pulling in um, the Joomla CMS repository so we can calculate the deltas. While that happens, we can talk about why we do this and why it's important. Now, not only is it powerful in the fact that you can ignore files that you don't want to track, one scenario I thought of and where this could be helpful is, you know, let's say you're um, Um, let, let's say you're developing something for Joomla 3.0 that could also be packaged and installed in Joomla 2.5. By tracking it in an external repository like this and only tracking the files and changing it would allow you to use a build script and package it that way. Um, Andrew is asking if we check for new files to, to get ignored. Yes, we do that. Um, that's a great question. That's a great lead into um, what I was waiting for, for Git to do. Um, that's a great question related to pulling in uh, recent changes since 2.5.4. Because I added the Joomla CMS repository as a remote, I fetched those changes in. And you can see we have a few changes since then. We have some new tags, new branches. So what I can do, if I do Git at all, and do a git status, it shows me that there's nothing to commit. Hmm. So uh, at this point, what this tells me is that I don't need to change anything in my git ignore because there's nothing, nothing, that's, nothing that needs to be ignored, nothing new that needs to be ignored. Um, so git status, just real quick. Um, Git status will show you what's changed in your Git repository. Um, that's a great command. No, it's a great command to look up. If you look, uh, one of the resources that I have linked in, in the, the notes is 
we get a CSM book. That's a great book. It's um, it's actually a full book that's published online. You can read it. You can learn a lot from there. There is um, some other resources, a few of the other resources. Um, GitRef is also another great one. You get reference. So there's a lot of information out there about Git. Um, I'm definitely not doing it justice, you know, especially in the short amount of time that we have. But these resources I have I have listed are not only resources that I like, but a lot of people agree that they're very definitive sources of truth and, and good information. So right now we're only tracking the files I'm adding to this repository. I'm also pulling in upstream changes from the Juma CMS. And so now I can actually commit only the changes I'm making. Now, now one thing I was just thinking about, just kind of thinking as, as I'm talking about this, we could theoretically take this, um, my git test repository, and in theory, and I'm, I'm definitely playing with fire right now, if I go into my fork of the Juma CMS, Um, we'll call it test. There's no reason why I can't add my test repository as a remote to my fork of the Juma CMS. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm adding another remote to my fork We got a weird. There we go. Hmm. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually, I'm actually, um, I'm adding a second remote to to my fork of the Juma CMS. So this way, for example, if if one of you forked the CMS and you made some changes and you wanted to. Uh, allow someone else or someone else wanted to check out your changes, they could add your fork of the CMS and the remote all those in. Um, so remotes are a really powerful way of sharing uh, changes before you push them back and, and test them and pull them. Uh, so I'm keeping an eye on the time very very carefully. Uh, so this this particular um, scenario of using git ignore to exclude the core files could be something that's very helpful. For um, for a tactic in your project, once again we're going back to strategy. You know, you know what's the purpose of your repository? How are you going to be using it? Uh, another example here that you can do, you could actually do a repo in a repo. I'm not talking about submodules. So for example, if I I have my gym with CMS, I can create a new I can create a new directory, and what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to pull in an existing repository that I have. I have a plugin called Terms. It's just an example plugin. Ah. Sorry, I'm using my notebook. It's a very small keyboard. So you, right now I'm, I'm actually in a subdirectory of a repository. My, my Joomla CMS directory, that is my fork of Joomla. So I'm now actually, actually in a subdirectory of that repository. And I'm going to actually clone I'm going to clone a repository into an existing repository. Now, that may sound very confusing, and it is very confusing, um, but the advantage there is that I can now actually test my terms repository within another repository, make changes, and if 
for example, in the Git Ignore of my, my Joomla CMS repository, I can use the Git Ignore um, to ignore the service plugin. So there's a lot you can do. It's really flexible, it's really powerful. Um, there are submodules. Submodules are basically projects within projects. Um, I'm keeping a close, close eye on the time right now. Uh, branching and merging. We talked a little bit about branches. Uh, when you fork a repository, you definitely want to keep your master branch clean and create feature branches. You can, um, what we can talk about real quick here is merging between branches. Actually, I believe it was the Joomla fork I had some branches. So we're going to talk about merging real quick in a few more minutes. So this is my Joomla CMS repository. This is a fork of the Joomla CMS. You see right now I have two branches. I have already created a change in my new branch, my new branch called New Branch. And I want to pull those changes back into my master branch. So right now, just to show you real quick, I just switched to my master branch. You can see here with the asterisk is highlighted. Merging is very easy. Unlike SVN. I need my master branch. I want to follow my, my new branch. We'll be get merged in the branch. I'm done. You see it fast forward, it means there's a change. You see there's a new file called readme.txt with two changes in it. And I just merged the branch. So now that they're merged, I could, for example, I could actually delete my new branch. So what I did here is very quick. Before, a few minutes ago, we created a new branch called New Branch. We made some changes in the branch. I checked out my master branch, and then merged in the changes in the new branch. So if you're working on a few different features, and there might be some collisions or changes between them while they're under development, you could theoretically create a new branch for each feature or every change, develop them, and then once you think everything will play or you're not sure, go back to your master branch and start merging those branches in. See how they work. Now, um, you can also push and pull between branches. Um, I don't think we'll have enough time to really talk about that too much, but there are some really great resources here in those notes. I think the, the branching and merging shows you some really great scenarios for how to check out branches, how to make changes in one branch, then merge them back in. Uh, also something that's very important that is a big topic is rebasing. Rebasing, um, unfortunately we don't have enough time to talk about today, but rebasing is basically merging changes uh, from one branch, uh, the commits from one branch you're pulling in and you're replaying them over another one. So what that means is if, if things get out of sync or if you made a number of changes in one branch and merge it back to the master branch and then you have another branch that's maybe older or out of date or, or maybe head, you want to synchronize everything you can rebase. Rebase is very powerful. It's a little more complicated, so you probably can have a whole webinar on just rebasing. But rebasing is also a very powerful tool. If you have a number of branches and you have commits to one that you want to have in another one, you can rebase that, rebase that commit into the other branch. Um, another really interesting thing, um, you know, I mentioned submodules or projects within projects. Uh, you know, for example, if you have, um, for example, if the Joomla CMS did not have the Joomla platform within it, in the, in the Joomla CMS repository, we could actually pull in the, the, uh, the Joomla platform as a Git submodule of the Joomla CMS. Yes, uh, one point that Mark just made is how uh, Git changes your dev workflow. So you can commit to your working branch 
as you work, for example, every few minutes, and it makes you easy to recover, recover from mistakes. It's absolutely positively correct. You know, uh, Git was created based on um, years and years of experience by Linus and his whole team. And they, they I think he said he worked with, um, I think it was BitKeeper for seven years and some other project for a few more years. And basically, Git was created in such a way where they learned from the best of everything. They try to take everything, the best, all the features of all the other systems out there, and then make everything much, much better. And it's bigger, it's better, it's stronger, it's faster. Um, the branching in Git is it's very inexpensive, it's very easy. Branches are very powerful. Um, and definitely, merging in Git is probably much easier than any other system out there. So, so Git definitely affects your development workflow, and it's definitely worth thinking about your development strategy before you jump into um, your your tactics and your Git repositories, because there could be different things, different ways to do things. Um, a couple other quick things I want to show you real quick. One is this this um, Git multi project that I thought was really interesting. I, I've always wondered, well, how do you have how do you have two Git repositories in the same directory? Well, you can't. Git doesn't allow you to do that. But one really great thing about Git being open source is that people can make changes to it. Now, this is something I've just discovered. I haven't tested it. I don't know how well it works. But um, a few other people have looked at it, and they think it looks really promising. It's called Git Multi. And it's created by um, independent user um, and basically what he is aiming to do, and I think he succeeded, is allow you to have multiple Git projects in the same directory. And if you think about it, that, that allows for possibly a huge number of different scenarios and, and complex scenarios. Uh, it, it's definitely complicated, but you know, if your development strategy you might need something like that, you might want to take a look at this. It, it might be an answer for you. And one other quick thing before we run out of time, I want to give you a little bonus uh, command. Um, this this was one of those things that took me a long time to find and figure out and, and work out. It, you, sometimes people um, need to export only the files that were changed between certain commits. And this command, git archive output equal file name head, and then we have you know some other commands. It does a git diff between two shards. SHA1 and SHA2. And that diff actually will output only the files changed between two commits. So you can create, you know, kind of update packs. Um, just in case you need to send your file to somebody else of only things you change, someone else can test something. Maybe they're not using Git, maybe they can't check something out online. Kind of neat little bonus command that um, I find handy from time to time. Uh, it looks like we're just about to run out of time. Does anyone have any other questions? Or uh, I know there's so much we can talk about that it's really hard to to talk about everything in one hour. But maybe we can get some notes or find out any directions or if anyone has any questions to talk about maybe specific strategies for for your individual product uh, project. We can maybe talk about that in the chat or um, any any questions right now. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we're voting commits. Well, uh, yeah, we're voting. Um, yeah, git reset is actually the command you're looking for. The question is, if I have a repo and I update it to the last commit, and then I want to revert that commit, how do I do it? So I believe we have um, git reset is the command you're looking for. The git reset head, for example,
for example, um, if you're working in your repository and um, okay, you want to you want to revert a specific commit. Okay, that one's that's definitely a challenge. Uh, <laughs> um, I think we have. Uh, I want to say un the unknown things has a great example of that. I think we. Okay, while I while I find this command site, it does um, um, it loses me right now. Um, this is the answer I'm looking for: reverting a resetting a specific commit. All right, the question was regarding port sketch. Should you continue using that or use the hash? Uh, personally, I always encourage everyone to use. Uh, command line interface or use bash as much as possible, at least initially, so you can learn the commands. I have never found a really great GUI that allows you the granular control than uh, the terminal or interface does. Um, I recommend that at least for learning, if you're still learning. So, uh, Steph and I, um, I'll have to answer your question offline because I think we're running into March time. Uh, there is a, a definite uh, way for doing that. It's, it's definitely complicated. You're, you're basically, um, it, it kind of depends because what you need to do is you're actually trying to pull out one commit. Um, I so it's, it's a little it's a little complicated. I'll definitely get you an answer. Um, I know exactly what you're talking about, and, and I have done it before. I think this might be right here. Oh yes. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Probably if you want to change the history, you can check out a specific. Uh, check out a specific commit. If that's what you're looking for, you, you have the history. You can actually roll back to that commit, but um, or reset it to one commit before that. Yeah, definitely. I think that would be a good conversation um, to have on the list because it could be a very specific use case, and some of the nuances of that use case might might affect that. I think Aaron might have. Um, I have a question. <laughs> Aaron's comment is if you're changing a repo's history, you're probably doing something naughty. Um, yeah, that's a good point. It, pretty much what you can do in that case is uh, check out the entire repository and rewind it to, to that point in history. And basically, everything that happened after that point, you, you would lose because you are rewinding it. That's probably the best way to do it. Definitely tracking your history is something very important. Try to try to keep up if you can. Um, yeah, yeah. Then you can pull in. Then you can pull in. Cherry. Absolutely. And, and you know this. This. Um. You. You can. Um. This actually really is a great illustration of the many different ways you can use Git. It is really powerful. Uh, you know, for example, that bonus command I show you. I showed you, for example. If you were to take a Git repository, rewind it to one commit before the SHA one that we're using here, and then you're, you ever check out, you, you export those files, you could actually just copy and paste those files and drop them on top of what you have. So that's another way you could do it. it it's really powerful, so there's probably a half a dozen ways you can do it. And rebase edits and amending commits for the advanced users in the house work to hide the stakes. <laughs> That's a great answer, Michael. Um, so I think on that, unless anybody has any other questions, 
I will um, turn things over to Mark. Perhaps I will probably uh, will actually end this webinar and then let Mark take over. Um, do you have anything to say about Git hooks? They seem useful, but I have zero. Yes, Git hooks are extremely powerful. It, it unfortunately depends on what you're doing. It depends on um, what exactly you want to hook into. What I can show you uh, super quick is if you're using GitHub under the admin section, GitHub has service hooks. So, for example, uh, one that a lot of people use that actually is not listed here is deploy deploy HQ. That allows you to um, automatically deploy your changes to a live web server. When you make commits, I believe it's deploy. I think it's HQ.com. Yeah, for example, deploy HQ is one of many. Um, so what happens here is um, this case is get um, commit hooks, get hooks. So every time you make a commit to a certain repository, deploy HQ will go and check out those changes and deploy it to your web server automatically. So that's one great example. Uh, I believe you can trigger thing scripts, unit tests. Um, I believe the Joomla CMS, they have the um, I, and Mark, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe when somebody merges a pull request that the system tests are automatically run or they run every night. Uh, but there's a lot you can do with them. It's really, really powerful. You, you can see right here on GitHub there is a short list <laughs> of the service hooks that they support. Uh, wow, it's getting longer and longer. Uh, so there's a lot you can do with those. It really depends on what you need, but um, definitely, uh, I mean, you could trigger a things, things script, for example, and make a new build, a test build, for example, after every commit, another example. Um, but definitely, I mean, definitely, you know, there's a lot, a lot you can do with Git, so definitely worth um, exploring. Do you have any questions or any, any ideas or, um, what I recommend is, is when you have your the idea of the project you're working on, how you're going to structure your files, you know what you're going to pull from, what what you need. I would highly recommend that um, you talk to some of the more experienced uh, Git developers, uh, developers that use Git. I'm sorry, I'm not necessarily one of them, <laughs> but um, you know between between all of us combined, we can probably help you develop a good strategy. Uh, if you need some modules or maybe a super project or maybe post commit hook. So there's a lot of great stuff. Um, at that point, I think I think that covers hopefully enough to give you a good taste of Git. And um, hopefully I've answered a few questions and most importantly I I hope I hope that I provide you with, with enough good resources to find everything you need to find. So on that note I will um, I think I'm not sure how I do this now. Okay, that, that, yeah. Um, so we have an option right. now. Thank you, everyone. I, I appreciate your, your attendance and your questions. And um, I think I'll have to look to Andrea to, to um, help me re relieve. Can you hear me? command or? Um, Can anybody hear me? Or? Will I just leave the meeting? I'm not sure. <laughs> well, thank you, everyone. All right, we will um, see you very soon. All right. Hey, I can hear you. Okay. Um, yeah. We can either create a new meeting or continue with this. Um, I think it. I think for the recording, it'd probably be better to just end the recording and then start a new one. That's what I think too. Um, so I'll end this one now. Oops, I think it may have ended. Um...